Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Put those hands together if you're glad to be in the service on today. Come on and let's bless our Lord. Come on. Hallelujah. We want to welcome you to service this morning. Come on. Wherever you are, we want you to feel welcome to join in with us. Come on. Everyone say welcome. Welcome to a place where there is joy. Sing, come on in. Come on in, be blessed and be restored. Leave your burdens at the altar. Leave your burdens at the altar. Drop your bags off. Lift your hands with me. And receive. And receive your blessing here for you. we have so much to thank you for. God, you have been so good unto us. In the midst of every situation, you are there. We thank you, God, for this celebration of your son being born this time of year. This is the season where we give you thanks for your son who came and died for us and paid the price. But Father, we just want to say thank you because you are the ultimate father. You care all about your children. You know what we need. You know, God, when we're in situations, when it's dark, God, your word is a lamp unto our feet and it's a light unto our pathways. We thank you for that, God. We thank you, God, because you are a provider. You are the ultimate provider, God. You know all 
those things that we need to speak the word of peace to our hearts. We thank you, God, for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for the joy you have given unto us. We thank you, God, because we have a consolation that though you will never leave us, you'll always be there. We thank you now, Father. We thank you, God, that oh, we walk through the valley in the shadow of death every day. You are there for us, God. And we come to you now, God, thanking you for all, God, for all that you have done. Thanking you for making a way. Thanking you for lifting burdens. Thanking you for bringing joy. Thanking you, God, for your word. For your word is our roadmap. It gives us the way to please you. And God, if we please you, we know, God, there is nothing you won't do for us. God, you are our provider. God, you are our healer. You are our deliverer. You are our company keeper. You are our comforter. You are our way maker. You are our door opener, God. And we thank you for it now. We thank you for your son, Jesus, whom we celebrate his birth now. This is the season that we do, but God, we praise you all the time for all that he has done for us. God, when we're in our valley experiences, you are there. You lift our burdens. You make ways. You open doors. And God, we say thank you for it now. Now, God, as we move forward in this service, we ask God that you would manifest your presence in this house. We know you're ever present, but we want to feel your presence on this morning. Send your presence, God. Hollow this house, God, that we might feel you. God, we ask that you would destroy yokes on this morning. Lift burdens, lift hung down heads. And that as we put our hands together in praise for you, as we elevate our hands in praise, we ask God, as we lift our minds to you, that you would inhabit the very praises of your people. Now, God, we ask that you would anoint your manservant on this morning, that he comes before this sacred death that you have provided, that you would anoint him. Send your word through him, God. Anoint his lips, that as he speaks, your word would go out, and it would go out, God. It would be as a hammer breaking rocks into pieces. God, we ask that you would break us down, that you might lift us up. We need you every day of our lives, God. We submit to you because you are the one. And because you are the one, we say yes to your will. Yes to your way. Yes to your word. We know that you love us and we love you as well. And God, again, we ask that you would anoint your manservant. We need to hear from you. No service is complete without that. Anointing God that he might speak and we might hear your word and give us an ear to hear what you have for us on this morning. And when all is said and done, we shall give thy name the praise, the glory, the honor, the glory, the honor, the glory and the honor. It shall be thine in thy son's name. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Thank God. Thank God. Amen and amen. I will be reading Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endured to all generations. May the Lord bless the hearers and doers of his holy word. Thank you. 
Come on, let's lift up the name of Jesus. Come on, let's make his name great in this place. He's worthy to be praised. We didn't come to form or fashion, but we come to lift up the name of Jesus. Come on, let's lift up the name of Jesus. Let's make his name great in this place. Come on, let's lift up the name of Jesus. Let's make his name great in this place. Come on, let's lift up the name of Jesus. He's worthy to be praised. No matter what it looks like. No matter what it seems like. Our God is worthy to be praised. Glory, glory. Bless your name, Jesus. There's nobody like you, God. We're here to worship the name of Jesus. Amen. Good morning and welcome to the Showers of Blessings Church of God in Christ. Our pastor is Dr. Darnell Thomas. We are delighted that you have joined us in our worship experience on this morning. If you are viewing our service live via the internet, we thank you for joining us. We ask that you tag a friend, start a watch party, and if this is your first time, jump in the comments. Leave us your name and your contact information. We have a ministry team that would love to connect with you, amen? If you're in the service on today, and this is your very first time, would you please stand so we can see who you are, all first time visitors. Amen, God bless you, oh. Are you okay? It looks like we're all family on today, amen? Amen, we're going to sit in a posture of expectancy as we prepare our hearts and minds to receive what God has for us on today. The word will be coming from our pastor, amen? Amen, we're not going to leave this experience today without receiving what God has for us. God bless you and again, welcome. Before I take my seat, I have a special card. It says, may God's love be your true blessing this Christmas season from the Thomas family. As we take a moment from our busy lives to celebrate the birth of our Lord, as uh, I'm sorry, we pray your holidays are filled with love your new, and your new year is filled with peace. This is from the Showers of Blessings, Pastor and First Lady Phyllis Thomas. God bless you. Come on, I need everybody to put your hands together. If you know that God has really been good to you, I need you to stand to your feet and come on and let's give God a hallelujah praise because he's been good to us. Come on, all through the year, he's been good. Come on, we owe him a good praise today. Put them hands together. Come on, all over the building, put your hands together. And if you don't mind, make a declaration and say, God has been good to me. Come on, testify. Been good. been good to me. God has, God has been, good. been good to me. Over and over. Over and over. Me God, has God has been good. Well, when I think of his goodness, say, good, he's been shown up good. I don't deserve, oh no, but yet and still, oh God, been good, God has been good. Is. Well, when I think of his goodness, yes, say good, he's been shown up good, I don't deserve, oh no, 
but he ain't in still. Good to me. 
Now come on, put those hands together and give him a praise. Give him a praise. He's been so good. He's been so good. He's been so good. He didn't have to do it, but he did. He's been so good. He keeps on making a way out of no way. Come on and lift him. Glory. Glory to the name of Jesus. Come on and bless him. Come on and bless him. Come on and bless him. and say thank you. Hallelujah. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. To our online visitors, you're at www.showersofblessingcogic.org. And right now you are worshiping with us via the live stream, YouTube, hallelujah, or even our uh, Facebook, even our website on this morning. And so you have joined into a Holy Ghost worship experience with the Showers of Blessings Church of God in Christ. Hallelujah. And so we say thank you. We welcome you 
you again. Come on, help me real quick. Somebody help me. Everybody should be helping me. Let's, that's it, that's it. Let's give God some glory and give God some praise for our leaders. Yes, Dr. Darnell Thomas, come on, put your hands together and bless God real good. And for First Lady Phyllis Thomas, come on, come on, come on. Keep it going, keep it going. Hallelujah, we bless God. Hallelujah. We certainly want to let God know that we thank him for blessing us with leaders. Hallelujah, that are second to none. Somebody say amen. Amen, amen, amen. So it is your time and my time to be a blessing to the house of God on this morning. We all have declared and we all have decided that we're going to be a part of this, of this ministry. Somebody say amen. And of this body of believers. And Dr. Thomas and First Lady Thomas certainly cannot do all of this by themselves. Hallelujah. But you have came and you have said that I will help uplift the burden and I will help you. Hallelujah. Move this ministry to where God wants us to be. Somebody say amen. Amen. And so we're going to continue. That's a good place to put your hands together and bless God. So we're going to continue to bless the house of God on this morning. Hallelujah. Not only this worship center, 38, 36, 48th Avenue where we're blessed by God, but we are also, we have been extended out to 7100 Bowling Drive. Somebody say amen. 7100 Bowling Drive. That's the Showers of Blessings Executive Plaza. I believe they had a youth function over there on Friday night. Ah. So as we begin to recuperate and come back from the pandemic, we want you to continue to give and be committed to the vow that you have and be consistent in what you're doing. So those of you that are here in the, in the house and you'd like to give via ATM or credit card, please go to my right, your left, and you're welcome to give via ATM or credit card on this morning. To our online visitors, www.showersofblessingscogic.org. If you will return to the front of the website, there's a donate button that you can click on. That will take you to a very safe place where you too can be a part of this worship and giving. Again, we want to say thank you for all of your tithes and all of your offerings, for everything that you give, both, both live stream or even in the house. Hallelujah. For church wouldn't be church without you. And for those of you that are via, that are viewing us via live stream and you are worshiping with us, we want to say, and you're not a member of Showers of Blessings, we want to thank you in advance for joining us. Hallelujah. In worship and in giving on this morning. One more time, give our online church. That's it. Put your hands together real good. Give our online church. Hallelujah. Our e-members. Yeah, 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 yeah. A great God bless you as they worship with, this, uh, with us on this morning. Let's stand all over the building. I believe we're ready to give. Put a smile on your face. Things certainly could be worse. But we're here and we're on top. And we're rising in Jesus' name no matter what it looks like. Amen. 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 Let's lift our gifts all over the building. If you don't have anything to give at all, please lift your gift. Please lift your wrist by faith. Been there, done that. Hallelujah. But because of obedience, I'm not there anymore. Somebody say amen. Dear God, we thank you this morning for your loving kindness. We thank you, Lord Jesus, because you have been so very good to us. Hallelujah. You've been real good to us. Hallelujah. So, Lord, we can't pay you for what you've done, but we certainly can be obedient to your word and we can give. Hallelujah. So here we are giving. Hallelujah. Being sowers and planning into the ministry and into the kingdom of God. God, we thank you because you said when we would give, hallelujah, we'll be, we, we will be receivers and receive it back a hundredfold. And so, God, we ask you to bless every household that's given, 30, 60, and a hundredfold. And for those that would like to give and have nothing to give at all, God, we ask you to please bless them as they lift their wrists by faith, that they may be a seed sower on the next time. Now, God, as we give. As we plant our seeds on this morning, we declare, we decree as one body and one family in Christ that we shall never. That don't sound like showers of blessings. We shall be broke again. No, not another day in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please don't be there. She's in the rear. Ah, yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Oh, we bless him. We bless him. We bless him. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah.
shower down. Amen. It's really, we praise God for each of you. Boom, uh, y'all want a little bit more? They say, grateful for the blessings that you have bestowed upon all of your people. Now, God, we need you now. I'm requesting that you stand up in me as I preach the word of God. Anoint me afresh like never before. Now, God, I have spent time with you in you have given me this and help me to be able to articulate it not just to show the brilliance of my mind nor to take your place because I can do nothing without you I can't do nothing without you I don't want to become like an intellectual sophisticate I just want to make plain your truth I need your revelation. Now help me to find the words to articulate with clarity. Not just to sound astute. But I want you help me to explain this word that you've given me by revelation. That your people may be able to apprehend and comprehend. And then God take it 
and let them let it saturate in their hearts to understand you even the more during this time of the gift that you have given this world to celebrate that day when Christ was born. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. My brothers and sisters, I must admit to you that I had some real serious problems because the, the pastor <laughs> had the serious to get out of the way so God can really give me the revelation now. When I'm about to preach and I'm standing in the context and I'm going to tell you the subject matter before I preach it, for the love of God. We hear that as a cliche. We hear it as a cliche. But when God really showed me what that really meant, everything he did for us and do for us, it was because of the love that he had for us. To express it in the superlative degree by which his nature had given us, we have to now go back in the recesses of our mind and look at for the love of God. It was for the love of God. Okay. If you had somebody that you love and you really cared about and you was explaining it to somebody and you was expressing to them because they, you have favored them because of your love toward them and then you say I'm doing it for the love of that person the love that would have been imparted to me and have been given to me I'm only doing it because of the love that they have expressed toward me and the love they had toward me and to me and for me I looked at that I said everything God did it was for who he loved. And now I have to show him what I do is because of your love. I want, to, I, I, I want to read the scripture before I get happy. Yes, I want to go first to, the, to Philippians 2, 6 through 8. Who being in the form of God, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself a no reputation that took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men and being fashioned and being found in fashion as a man he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even the death of the cross. Colossians 1, 16 and 17. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or power, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things and by him all things exist. And he is head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, who, in, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have preeminence. Yes. Okay. First Peter. No, let's go to Hebrew, Hebrew. Hebrew 1 and 3, who being in the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and uphold all things by the word of his power, when he had 
by himself purged our sin after he had purged our sins. After he had purged our sin, sit down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Now that was interesting when I read that. And then I had went to, um, let's go to this one. First John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, let me explain this. Uh, and I'm going to get to another scripture later. You may be seated for the love of God. Now listen, I'm going to try to do this the best as I can. I, I, was getting, I, I was getting some highlight. Moses, who wrote the book of Genesis the, as, the, as the beginning, he tells us the universe was created by God. John also talks of the world and the universe were made by Christ. Of course, there is no contradiction. Jesus was God. And he created all things. This creation included everything, even the electrons of the galaxies. And from angels to Adam. Now, if you notice, when I talk about the, the electrons, I, I, I looked up that word electrons. It's just a source of energy or electricity that keep the, the stars shining. I was wondering what it was connected to. <laughs> to keep it lit. Edison, as we know it, created the electric light. But it has a source by which it comes from. The turbine engine that turns, uh, that generate electricity to go through the wirings lighten up cities, uh -huh. Uh -huh. but that was man-made. Throughout the world, you can see from an airplane when there is a city because of all the lights yes. Yes, yes, yes. that was generated by something man-made. Uh -huh. But when you look at the stars and try to explore, I'm trying to figure out what source it's keeping them lit. Who lit up the sun? Who lit up the moon? Now, you have to now understand, from the beginning, all things was made by him and it was created for him. But he did it for us. Now, wait, 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 wait. I'm, 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 I'm going somewhere with this. Now, he is controlling his own created universe, who being in the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power. When he had by himself purged our sin, he went down. Now, notice it's, it's, it's a vast connection between him creating and then down for our sins. Notice he created all things and then put us in what he created because he did it for us because of his love toward us. And then when he became contaminated, he came and purged our sin to express how much he loved us and went back and sat down on his majesty. I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. I'm trying. I dare somebody sit there as if he don't exist. He's still God. Here, 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 here. The text. The text here. The text here. And he is before all things, 
and by him all things consist. Colossians 1 17. So from, from the time he created the earth, a place of some 93 million miles from the sun, right on top of the very day, he is controlling the distance. that it can only come so close and no more. Because if the sun got close, we were bored to death. But he keep a certain distance. No, 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 See, that's how come when you look at the rolling seas and as massive as they are, they have boundaries. They can only come so close and no more. You see the tide coming in and then they go away. How is it at night for somehow, it's a freaking nature, it's a, it rises. Who lifts all of that water up? And then it dissipates when the sun come out. I, I'm trying to understand. It, it, it's the same control as he put in the sunflower. It's amazing how the sunflower at night it'll droop. But as soon as the sun come up, it'll lift his head. See, sometime in your dark moments, with your head hung down, but when you look up toward the sun, the S-O-E, your head will go up. No one here said, lift up your heads, hold ye gates, and be ye lifted up, you everlasting. I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. Let, 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 let me, yeah, please, 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 please. Notice, as you look, he said, I am in them, and thou art in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and has loved them, and thou hast loved me. Father, I will that thou also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which thou hast given me for thou loveth me before the foundation of the world now if you notice I, 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 took, some, I took some notes and it, it is estimated that some 40 billion individuals have lived upon the earth since Adam in this contrast we have seen the vast multitudes of humanity Include the black, the white, the brown, the yellow, everybody. These men have explored and settled in every corner of this earth. They speak dozens of languages, practices multi multiple religions, and they have formu formulated numerous cultures. But every single human being in the 40 billion number shares one vital thing in common their purpose of life down here and their internal destiny <laughs> depends upon completely of their personal, uh, their personal relationship with Jesus. I don't care what you believe and what you don't believe. How you try to figure him out that you can't figure out and come up with some foreign thing because if you had decided on what he should have did and you don't believe what he did, what he said he did, when he did what he did, and why he did what he did, because he wanted to do what he did. What I'm trying to explain is God can do anything he wants to do. You can't figure that out. Only thing you have to do is look at what he's already done and whatever 
David is, he can do whatever he want to do, and I'm satisfied with what he's done. In, 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 the, in the text, in, in, in the text, in, in, in the text, in the text, in the text, in the text here. In the text here. See, uh, the key of the question of the of the universe continues to be, what do you think ye of Christ? <laughs> Something very interesting. I don't know why I always want to pick on you, Deacon T. Uh, you closest to me. Anyway. <laughs> what, 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 what amazed me, I, I'll come back to that. What amazed me is when Jesus came, we have the thought process to separate him from God and the Holy Ghost and they all three exist and we put them psychologically in our mind as God and then Jesus and then the Holy Ghost. Because when you see God, you see Jesus. When you see Jesus, the Holy Ghost is in both of them. And all of them is one. You can't separate them. So when Jesus was creating them, that was God. He only took on flesh to redeem us for the love that he had toward us. But he did not cease to be God. So it ain't no God only and Jesus only and the Holy Ghost only. No, 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 no. The devil is a lie. Jesus was from the beginning. He was at the beginning and he was from the beginning. He was a spirit in the beginning in the Old Testament. Okay, okay, okay. Let, 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 me, let, me, prove, let me prove my argument. Let me prove my argument. Let me prove my argument. If you notice, in the Old Testament, Jesus pre-existed then, and I found out Jesus appeared as an angel, but it was God portraying himself as an angel so we can identify, but he did not send Michael, the seraphim, the cherubims. It was God, behold, I have seen the Lord. Hold it. In the form of an angel. Throughout the Old Testament, God was showing up. And they said that was Jesus. Well, if you say that was Jesus, you're talking about that was God. And wherever Jesus was, God is. Wherever he is. So God was protecting everybody from the beginning in the Old Testament. He just became flesh in the new. Talk to me, somebody. And I said, so hold it. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me. Jesus identified himself as Jesus. The theologian position is strongly suggested that two keys to this passion. Now notice Genesis 48 where the dying patriarch Jacob. Mm-hmm when he was about to anoint his grandchildren, mm -hmm. uh, you have to understand when he was going to uh, anoint his great grandchildren, Jacob mm -hmm, was dying. Joseph bought Manasseh and Ephraim for his, grand, for his father, which was their granddaddy, to anoint. Yeah. And an angel which redeemed me from all evil blessed the lads. Genesis 48 and 16. And so when you look and assume that the angel, when in Genesis 46, he shows up. And the angel of the Lord said unto him, why askest thou uh, thus after my name, seeing it is a secret? Judges 13 and 18, y'all go there and see, and see. I'm not just making that up. How come he didn't say who he was? He didn't say, behold, I am Gabriel. I stand before the Lord. And he has sent me. He didn't say, I am Michael. 
Peter said, I'm a cherubim. They said, what's your name? And the angel of the Lord said unto him, why thou askest thou after my name, seeing it's a secret. The word secret in the Hebrew form brings Isaiah 9 and 6 where he said, he translated, I'm just wonderful. That's what you can call me. Not like it is on TV, I'm Mr. Wonderful. I'm, I'm a... Now if you notice, he also appear, appeared Mm -hmm. Not in, just in uh, G uh, Genesis uh, 14 and 16, but also in Judges 13 and 18. Also, Isaiah died and said, uh, he talked about him. Y'all remember 720 years before he got here. That's how come they call Isaiah the C&I prophet, because in his, pro in his uh, uh, prophetic scholarly uh, schooling, God appeared more to him than he did anybody to give him revelation. Now, if you notice here, that when Isaiah said, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government, the government, the government, because he understood how to govern. <laughs> See, they have to have now a man-made government that they can't really figure out what they done put together, and it's totally confusing depends on what side of the table you're on. And they don't know really how to govern. But that's how I said, the government should be on, on his shoulder. Now, the best way to govern is find somebody that has mastered governing. So he said, and the government should be on his shoulder. His name shall be called Wonderful Counsel, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. All of that is summed up in God. He governs the world, which he made, and he's wonderful in doing it. He's the best one to counsel us, to give us direction, because all the wisdom and the knowledge come from him anyway. The Mighty God who's able to fight your battle He's the everlasting father. He's going to be with us to eternity. Somebody say, that's all God. So when Jesus came, he did not cease to be God. He came to us as God in the flesh because in the Old Testament, you only seen him in spirit. And you couldn't really tell what the spirit was. You just seen him move in his creation to do the things he did because he controls it. So therefore, when we look at God and how he controls his own nature, his, his, own, created, his own creation, don't you know he ought to be able to control you? But he gives you the only one, you the only one that he gave a free will. And he wanted you to choose what you're going to believe. It's amazing to me how people that is so supposed to be intelligent and I'm trying to make sense out of this nonsense because it's nonsensical not to believe what you see just the way it is. If you can't figure out how it was created, leave it up to God because he did it. He didn't get your approval. He didn't have to pass nothing. He didn't, have to, he didn't have to pass anything by you. Only thing you do, he said, believe me for my work's sake. Because I, I, I'm too great not to be who I am. And I don't have time to explain a whole lot of Pacific. Just believe. Because all things are possible if you... And if you believe on him as the scripture has said... Something in your gut, something in your belly, arise up like living water. It'll give you a refreshing, a renewing, a revelation in, in the text. In, in, in. Here, here. Oh God. Oh my God. If you don't, if, 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 if you notice here, 
if, 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 if you notice now, now, now and then I, I looked at the scripture. See, in the Old Testament, he appeared to Hagar, Abraham, Jacob, Moses. Let me stop right there. When he appeared to Moses, y'all familiar with that story. On the back side of the mountain, tending his father-in-law's sheep, whom he had been running as a fugitive, as a renegade, because he had a murder, and he had to flee. Now he's taking care of his father-in-law's sheep on the back side of a mountain, looking at everything and seeing a bush burning, but it wasn't consumed. He said, I'm going to turn and let me see this sight. And then he said, a voice spoke behind. That wasn't no angel. That was God talking. And he said, now pull off your shoes for the ground you stand on. It's holy ground. See, wherever God is, it's holy. Wherever he exists, it's holy. You got to learn how to humble yourself and respect uh, the holiness of God. And, and so, 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 so he appeared <laughs> to Moses. He, he appeared to Joshua. He appeared to Gideon. He appeared... To Samson's parents. He appeared to Isaiah. He appeared to through the three Hebrew boys. And, now hold it. Here, 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 when I was reading that, he appeared to the three Hebrew boys. Five of them been turned up seven times to threaten them. And they're gonna force them to bow down to an image that they know nothing about, but they did know the true and the living God. And now they on trial. For they believe. And they say, oh king, we're not careful concerning this matter. I don't care what you do and how hot you turn it up. We're not bound down to your image. Because if he don't, I know he able. Now, if you notice, go back and look at that. Because they believe. The Bible says they bound them. And they clothes, coat, hat, and everything. And when they threw him in, yeah. it's amazing how it burned the ropes, but didn't burn the clothes. It burned the thing that was holding them down. It was burning the stuff that was keeping them bound, but it didn't touch them. When the king comes back, he looks in and says, I thought we threw in. But I see. And it looks like, how you know how God look? Ain't nobody ever seen him. But you said it looks like. Did God give you a revelation of some insight that look through the eyes and see it ain't nobody but me, it ain't nobody but God. An express image of Jesus, come on, and it looks like. Now hold it, hold it. How did he know in the Old Testament what Jesus looked like before Jesus got here? You theologians, y'all know. How? How? Who? who, who what, how we, it ain't no pictures. It wasn't no cameras. How you know what he looks like? He said, but I see him walking. It was kind of like God said, listen here. You can't touch my children. Because faith has kept them. And whenever I see faith, I move in the midst of them. See, you got to learn how to have faith in God. He'll protect you. I don't care how hard your trials are. God will come. Okay. 
Let me move on. He appeared to Daniel. He appeared to Zechariah. If you notice, uh, when they appeared to Joshua, you know, at the battle in Jer at Jericho, <laughs> this is what I like. Okay, I, I'm, I'm going to fast forward it, but let me just stop here. Station for identification. Now, Jericho, the walls of the temple, it is said, you can ride two chariots side by side. It was so fortified. And the horses nor the chariots would touch each other. Well fortified. Notice. Now, the tactics that God has given them, because only God can do this. He said, this is what I want you to do, Joshua. That's how come it's good to follow God's instruction. You'll always come out winning. This is an example of a testimony. Just do what the Lord said. I don't care how it looks. I don't care how it, it, it looks to you. It don't, it don't look like it's going to It don't look like it's practical. It doesn't look like it's going to. How in the world are these walls coming in and we going in just marching around and at the last just holler? Notice, the Bible says, he said, for six days, march around one time. Don't say a word. But the enemy was nervous because of their presence. Because when they heard that they was close, the rumbling went through because they had said, I had heard about them. See, we had to keep up God's reputation. See, we cannot let nobody feel like God is not able or God will let you down because the devil knows God's reputation. And when he knows that these people have fought victories and they won, when the devil gets close to you, he's, mm. Mm. See, whenever you come in the room, the devil ought to get nervous. Whenever the devil tries to attack your house, he ought to get nervous. You, you, you have to you understand what it means because God has always fought your battle. He always came through for you. God, God, God. Notice, 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 notice. Uh, Y'all excuse me. I feel God all over me. Notice, no, notice the text here. Notice the text. They followed the instructions. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall. If you lack wisdom, ask of God, and he'll give it to you free. So if you look at his background, look at his resume, why don't you depend on him? Okay, that's a whole nother story. Now, they marched around one time every day. Six days. He said, now on the seventh, all I want you to do is march around six times, but on the seventh, I want you to shout. I want you to say something. See? I don't care how the devil have set up his defenses against you. Wait upon the Lord. And again, I say, wait. And he shall strengthen your heart. Now watch. <laughs> now notice, the seventh time. Now you remember the fortified walls. They didn't go through the gate. God is going to show you how great he really is. Yeah. 
The Bible said when they hollered, the walls pearl. It didn't crack. A brick didn't fall. The whole thing collapsed. I'm trying to figure out what kind of engineering did they use? Cause the wind didn't blow. It wasn't no earthquake. But because they began to holler to God, sing praises to God, I just can assume in my heart, God sent angels. And they went to, I, I, I don't know, I'm just speculating and the Bible doesn't say, all I know is the walls came down. All I know, I don't care how he do it. I don't care who he used to do it. I don't care what method he does used to do it. All I know is I'm following the instruction and the rest of it belong to God. Come on, give God praise now. Let me, hold on, wait. wait. Let me, let me, let me move, let me, let me move. I, 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 I'm a, I gotta move on. Now, if you notice, in the, test, in, in the Old Testament of Christ, Adam knew his headship through new creation. Moses, his prophetical, prophetical ministry. Melchizedek, his priestly ministry. David, his kingly ministry. Jeremiah understood his sorrow. Um, uh, Joseph knew about suffering. Isaac knew him through death. Uh, Jonah through a resurrection. Let, let me start with Jonah. Can, 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 can I start with Jonah? Y'all heard me preach Jonah. When I kept reading the book of Jonah, all I used to remember is hearing Jonah in the belly of the well. But when I went to looking at the details, and Jonah is doing something contrary to the laws of human nature. You're a nurse, y'all, it's a nurse there. Five minutes underwater, Fish can swim in the water because of the fins and the way they're made and the way God all straight. They can live in the water, get oxygen through water, going through the, their, uh, uh, y'all know. And so here, <laughs> notice this. Jonah didn't have no, none. How did he go down? And the Bible says, because he was running away from God or the voice of the Lord. Because God had him on an assignment. Well, before he went overboard, he got everybody else in trouble that was around him because of his old disobedience. See, you got to watch when God hands is on some folks. Because you can make other people's lives miserable being disobedient to God. Okay, I'm going to leave that one alone. I said this, I haven't read this, but I said, Jonah couldn't even commit suicide. <laughs> he knew he couldn't drink all that water. <laughs> Throw me overboard. Y'all remember how they cast lots. And God, that Bible said, and God had prepared a great fish. Yeah. Now, I'm not going to argue over if it was a whale or a fish. Both of them swim in the water. <laughs> See, all I know, it was big enough to hold Jonah like a mansion, but he couldn't go nowhere. Took him to the bottom of the sea, and the Bible said, hold him. Now, how did Jonah survive, survive three days and three nights in the belly of the well underwater? The Bible says seaweeds were running around his neck. He said, out of the bed of hell, I cry. If you read the text, Jonah first Repent it. He prayed. He repented. And then he praised. Read the text. I said, God, I've never seen that before. I said, what? No, no, no. He prayed, repented, and praised. When he repented, God did forgive him. Because he, if you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Now he will hear your prayer. 
Because first you have to confess I'm wrong. Own up to it. A lot of people don't want to take ownership. They want to blame it on somebody else. But you can't blame nothing on somebody else when you have to own up to what your part was in it. Come on, talk to me. And then the Bible said, when he began to praise, the Bible said he spit him up on sea. Nineveh was a three-day journey. When he praised, the whale got him there in one day. Used him as a taxi. Now hold it. Now watch. If you notice the text, now go back. He prayed, he repented, and then he praised. He didn't get out when he prayed. Prayed. He didn't get out when he repented. But when he seen God's faithfulness and he began to praise him in the middle of being held down underwater, doing something contrary to the laws of nature, that his praise made the enemy sick and spit him up. The Bible said he vomited. Don't you know when the devil is trying to hold you down, you praise. God will make your enemy sick because of your praise. And, and how he, they was bounding you and keeping you down, all of a sudden God will cause a release. The devil got to let you go. That's how come don't sit on God. Don't fold your hand. Don't you act like God is not God. You better learn how to do what Jonah did. When the devil got you on lockdown, you better open your mouth and tell God, I want to thank you. I want to appreciate you. I, I want to love you like that because of who a God is. Now, that's... Let me get back to my... Let me get back to... Can I... Give me a few more minutes. Would y'all please give me a few more minutes? If you look, if you look, when you look at Jonah, the resurrection, Joshua, his victorious life, Noah, how he saved life, Abraham, the father of all, all created, not the, the father of, uh, of uh, the descendants of Abraham, and uh, 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 the Daniel, his acceptance by the father, Elijah, which was a forerunner, uh, Elisha, uh, the miracle worker, uh, Ezekiel understood how to use his parables, and Ruth represented the church. You don't remember uh, Naomi, Boaz, and Ruth? Okay, I don't have time to go through that. I want to go there. Boaz, his love for the church. Israel, the zeal for the scripture. Nehemiah, the zeal for the holy city. Absalom, his opposition. Samson, uh, Solomon, his wisdom and lot uh, in a black slitten condition. You, you understand? Jesus, God, used all of that uh, to come to let us understand this was part of the operation to let you see that I'm God in everything, in every aspect of your life. And, some, and if you know that if he can use some people in some area and use you in other areas, don't you sweat on somebody else's position. Don't you sweat on somebody else's circumstances. Don't you sweat on, you know, you got to learn how to operate what God has placed you. Let him use you. Now, now, I, I have to hurry on. Now, if you notice the facts of the divine existence, the pre-existence of the deity of God, Jehovah Witness, a cult brazenly declared that Jesus pre-existed as Michael, the archangel, prior to Bethlehem. No, he didn't. And then you have other teaching all sorts of things. I don't have time to do. But John the Baptist taught us. Y'all remember John the Baptist? I must. John the Baptist baptized him in the Jordan. John the Baptist. 
whom was Jesus' cousin. Elizabeth, which happened to be Mary's cousin. John, it was Zachariah, which was a husband, was in the temple doing church work. And an angel appeared to him while he doing church work. Leave that, I'm going to leave that alone. And told him what was going to happen. His wife didn't believe it, but that was okay. And he said, how's these things going to be? Don't worry about how they're going to be. And you don't call his name John. Now, before the salutation came from Gabriel to Mary, which happened to be Elizabeth's cousin. She was then six months pregnant with John. Well, when Mary got the salutation about how she gonna give birth to the Son of God, he said, how do you think gonna be seeing that I'm a virgin? I don't know no man. I know I'm engaged to Joseph. We ain't did nothing before marriage. He said, what you're going to carry is of the Holy Ghost. And the Bible says the Holy Spirit overshadowed her. And Jesus came in the womb without the aid. A man. See, you have to understand God's nature is not human. But he did make human nature. And he know how to control human nature if you let him. And so here, 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 here. Now she's pregnant with Jesus which is the son of God, which is God, which was pre-existent from creation. God, now in the womb of a woman. At the whimpering, reconciling the world back to himself. No, hold it, that's a, that's a whole, that's a whole nother subject. Well, Mary run to Elizabeth. Gave her the salutation that the angel just gave her. Told her how it was going to happen and what had happened to her. John, in the womb, was listening. The Bible said when she got the salutation, John leaped in the womb. John grew up with locusts and honey. Didn't have a nice wardrobe, but he was preaching the gospel. Baptizing them unto repentance. And he said, there's one coming after me that's considered before me shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and that with fire of the world uh, whom shoes I'm not even worthy to stoop down and unloose uh, Jesus walked up to him and John, John baptized me he said no 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 it is you that I need to be baptized uh, he said before it to be fulfilled uh, John baptized Jesus when Jesus came up the Bible say the, the, the spirit of him descended upon him like a dove uh, the heavens opened up and say behold this is my beloved son hear ye him now notice how John the Baptist and Jesus the the Holy Ghost was working together. I want you to understand, we as people of God, I don't care if you Baptist, Methodist, Pentecost, or whatever, we got to learn how to work too. That's all I'm saying. Oh, 
that's another. So here, 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 here an angel come and called his name. My name is Michael. In the Old Testament, never didn't know who it was. They said it was Jesus appeared as an angel because everything he did, he pointed only to what God could do. I don't have time to go through all of them to show you what God was in it. Okay, I believe it was Jacob. Am I right? This just came in my mind. It was Jacob. Talking, he, he, he was having some trepidation on what to do. And the angel of the Lord came down. And as he was talking to him, he was going back to heaven. And he said, hold it, hold it, hold it. Hold it. I can't let you go like that. And the Bible said, he said, it's about to break a day, and I, I got to go back. And he grabbed hold to him and said, I'm not going to let go until you bless me. See, whenever you're in a dilemma, you better learn how to grab hold to the horns of the altar and say, God, I'm not going to let you go until you bless my soul. Come on and give God praise in here. Notice, 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 notice. Okay, I'm, 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 I'm preaching too long. I'm, 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 I'm deviating from, now notice, now notice, now notice, now notice. Now, and the Bible say, <coughs> he <coughs> hit in the thigh and he became limp. <laughs> he said, you can <coughs> hurt me if you want to, but I'm still not gonna let you go. I, I, I don't care long, if you bless me I, I'll limp to church I, I don't care what it takes uh, as long as you bless me I'll get there the best way I can but one thing I'm not going to do what you got I need what, what you got I, come on talk to me somebody up in here and he said surely I have seen the Lord notice the text notice the text now when we come down here, and I, I, got, I got to close. Um, I, in, in my, I, got, I, got to, I got to close on me. I, I, I got some more, but now fast forward. Then. The Ebonites, the Ebonites, E B I O N I T E S, the Ebonites, denied the reality of Jesus in his divine nature. Uh, they ever refuted about the Apostle John in the first verse of the Gospels account. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. The same in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. Nothing was made that was made in the head of men. So therefore, God puts himself in a position as I'm the word. Okay. And then the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. The word, which we spell out came off the paper and lived out the word. I'm God, but look at me as being the word. So, interchangeably, I am the word. All right. Do you not know people get a reputation by their occupation? Like if you are a... Um, uh, uh, Goldsmith, they call you, hey, Mr. Smith. Yeah. <laughs> and they associate what you do to a name. Yeah. And I just want you to understand, now, God was the word. <laughs> but he was all God. But they associated what he said, his occupation. Because when he spoke... Everything happens. Say, hello, Mr. Word. Hello, Mr. Word. Because everything you say comes to pass. Come on, give God praise in this place. That's how come you got to obey the word of God. Because everything he say, it will come. Word, word. The word was God. The word was with God. The word was God. 
in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same in the beginning with God, all things were made by Him, but nothing was made that was made in Him was life. Now everything talked about Him and it connected everything to Him. So He was in all of them because they was in. So therefore, when Jesus said came, he came as the word of God in the flesh. He did not cease to be God because he became flesh. That's where a lot of theologians uh -huh, and agnostics, they refute the gospel of, John, of the apostle John in his epistle because they cannot believe God had a human nature. No, God did not have a human nature. He just had a human presence. But his nature didn't change from God to man's nature. Man's nature is sinful. God cannot become sinful in man's nature. So he did not cease to be God when he became Jesus, and then there's the other belief, the belief that human people don't have a divine body. All right? And then there's a, another extremist that they say they cannot mingle the third party of the Holy Spirit to Jesus or God because, and because Jesus was flesh and God's spirit mm -hmm, cannot dominate that flesh. Those was, I looked it up, and it says, E-U-T-Y-C-H-I-A-N. Look it up. <laughs> I just can't see it with my Texas tongue. I'm just too heavy. So therefore, when you look, and, I, and I, I, I'm, I'm coming home. When you look, I'm, 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 coming, I'm coming home. I'm coming, I'm coming home. I'm coming home. I only, I'm only all right when you, you like it. And so here... <laughs> When you look, when you, when you look down through the centuries, how so many people have given God an identity by which they believe. Now, when you look at the song of Solomon 5 and 16, he paint him God as an artist. And he said, he is the one whom is so lovely. 1 Peter 2 and 6 put him as an architect, as a chief cornerstone that the builders rejected. Malachi uh -huh, uh, 4 and 2 used him as an astronomer, astronomer, the son of righteousness. John 8 and 35 puts him in the kitchen and called him the bread of life. He's the baker. And then Matthew 13 and 44, somebody said, now uh, he's my banker because he's hidden treasure. Isaiah 28 and 16 used him as a, a, a contractor, like a builder. He, he's a sure foundation. And then somebody say, uh, from the carpenter shop, from his stuff that uh, he say in John 10 and 7, uh, he is the door. <laughs> he is the way. And then uh, Jeremiah looked at him and looked over the landscape and said, thanks be to God, he was my doctor. He's the great physician. Um, and then when you look at the scholastic of uh, human skill, uh, he, he's the real educator uh, because he have a new and a living way. <laughs> Hebrews 10 and 20. And then he did forget the farmer that supplied the harvest um, and he said he's a sower of the and the lord of the harvest thanks be to god uh, when you look at life uh, life sums him all up uh, and i want you to understand he did all of that for us and now you can say i'm here because of the love of god <laughs> come on and give god praise in this Everyone stand in. I do it. What the Bible say. For the love of God. Because if he can do that for me. 
I ought to be able to do that for my fellow men, my sisters and my brothers. If God loves us the way, if God, if, if God loved us the way he loved us while we was yet sinning, he died for us because he treasured us. I said this before, the wind obey him, the sea obey him, the animals obey him, but the one he loved, why does he have so much trouble with who he loved? How come we can't take on things without a whole lot of unnecessary stuff? I don't want to get close to home. I just want to talk in general. Because if you knock on anybody's door behind your, your doors at your house, there are always something that's unique behind those doors. Whatever it is. But he said, I stand at the door and I knock. <laughs> and if any man, woman too, would open up to me, he said, I'll come in. I sit with them, I'll sup with them, and they with me. I found out life would be a whole lot better when you let Jesus in your house. And today, this, your body, is symbolized as a temple, a house where God wants to reside. What I just explained to you, and I gave it to you in the condensed version, but I'm not going to say it ain't no more to come. It's some more to come. Because I got stuck, because I want to deal with when Jesus, and I'm going to show you where he existed in the Old Testament. And he did not stop existing when he got to the New Testament. He just took on a new form to redeem us back because what he had to do in the old. Y'all remember when you learned it in school, the Old Testament is the New Testament concealed. And the New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. When Jesus appeared in the Old Testament, we only seen the glory of God manifesting himself, but could not really identify what, who, what was happening and who to, uh, to connected to. So when Jesus came, did things beyond humans' ability to do, you had to understand that was nobody but God. Could nobody mimic what Jesus did. So what he was doing in the Old, he brought it to light and manifested in the new. They said, we don't live in the Old Testament. We live in the New Testament. Well, you have to understand the, the new came from the old. Because when he created man in the Old Testament, they didn't go off the scene and then all of a sudden we came, we was connected to the old. I can't get no help in here. And God, I'm still preaching now. Okay. Let me, I'm trying to make an altar call. It's still on me, y'all. It's still on me. And so, who wouldn't serve or accept God in their lives? The mystery of godliness is only a mystery when you don't believe that it's just mystical. Because you're trying to figure out how he did it, and I can't believe it did what he did like it did because I can't understand how he did it. He don't have to explain how he did it. He just did it. Okay. So today, if that's you, raise your hand. Now, New Year's night, we're going to have an altar call, but I'm going to do this again today. Everybody, we want you to at least to have both of your vaccination, at least two of them. If you haven't got your booster yet, but if you have both of your vaccinations, we're going to call on you to help. 
Well, Dr. Dave, if you come and you don't have no vaccination, please stay covered tight. <laughs> and we're going to pray to God, sanctify the atmosphere. <laughs> Uplifted hands, eternal God, we want to thank you for being who you are this year and this season, how people are so caught up and consumed with shopping. But today, God, we want to make sure that we bring this gift to you. We offer ourselves because of the gift that you have given us. You have kept us all year long. They did not have a funeral on us. It was because of your goodness toward us. You left us here for a reason. And today, I want, you, I, want, I want my house clean. I want my heart clean. I want my mind clean. I want my thoughts clean. God, purify us like never before. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, purge us with the hyssop of your blood in the name of Jesus. Now God, we confess we haven't been all what we confess to be, but if you cleanse us from all unrighteousness and cleanse this house like only you can, I want to be right. I want to be saved from hell and damnation. I want to live with you eternally. So God, I want to walk up right before you. I want to think right. I want to talk right. I want to respond right. I want to be obedient to your word. And I want you to thank you for accepting me back. I confess I've been wrong. But today, I need you as my personal savior to save me from hell and damnation. Come into my heart. I do believe that you died for my sin. And God on the third day raised you from the dead and gave me a new lease on life. And I want to thank you. Turn to your neighbor. I'm, I'm saved again. I'm saved again. I'm saved again. Come on, give God a hand of appreciation. No, no, no. Give God a hand of appreciation. And that concludes my message for the day. And yes, yes, that, that concludes it because I, I, I'm just looking at some stuff here and I'm not going back to that. And I'm going to quit looking. Amen. And I want to open the doors of the church. There may be someone here today that don't know Jesus in the part. I'm, that, I'm not that. That you want to unite with our fellowship. If that is you today and you want to become a part of this ministry, I guarantee you if you come go with us, we'll do you good. We will do you good. We have so many testimonials where the church, that was a blessings church, has transformed their lives. And they have walked in the newness of life and have enjoyed life more splendidly since they have joined the church and they've been with Christ. If that is you, why don't you come down now? The doors are open. Come down. Let me meet you down here. Give you right hand of fellowship. Amen. Are you here today? All right. That means showers. Y'all need to get busy and go to witnessing and call, tell them people they need to come to church. <laughs>